What's going on, everybody? Ben Morgan, Fins Up Network. And we got some, I would say, unexpected news thrown our way on Saturday afternoon via Byron Jones on Twitter. Because you know what? We've heard a lot of people talking about his injuries, but we haven't heard really anything from the source himself. And today he kind of broke that silence. I'll, I'll put the first uh, tweet here on the scroll as we're as we're looking at it but obviously i'll read it out loud here as well much has changed in eight years today i can't run or jump because of my injury sustained playing this game do not take the pills they give you do not take the injections they give you if you absolutely must consult an outside doctor to learn the long-term implications now if we're looking at byron jones we were told all off season byron jones is on track to play week one there's been no setbacks he will be there on week one Week one came and went, no Byron Jones. Week two, week three, week four, so on and so forth. It became a, it became a tradition for Mike McDaniel to be asked on Mondays, what's the status of Byron Jones? And it was, he's rehabbing. He's doing fine. He should be back. Well, as we saw, never came back, never came back. And then it was shortly after the bye week, it was basically the team saying, you know what? He's been shut down. We're not expecting him to come back at this point in time. So there is another tweet that he put out. I'll throw that one up there right now because this is where a lot of the, the retirement um, conversation comes into play. But Byron went on to say, it was an honor and privilege to play in the NFL, but it came at a regrettable cost I did not foresee. In my opinion, no amount of professional success or financial gain is worth avoidable chronic pain and disabilities. Godspeed to the draft class, of 2023 and I think he threw a lot of that part in there at the end because he was quote tweeting like a like an NFL combine tweet that had his numbers because he set all those uh those those records with his broad jump and everything he basically blew up the combine so then he came out with that now you're going to go on social media and you're going to see a lot of people saying this is kind of Byron's way of saying he's hanging it up that he's going to be retiring and honestly like it's we'll, we'll wait to see what happens with that but at the end of the day like what, the way, what, how did he word that again? He, he said, it was an honor and privilege to play in the NFL, but it came at a regrettable cost. It's hard not to think about it that way, right? I mean, it's really hard not to think about that way. But before I get into a little bit of like the on-field Dolphins related stuff, I do want to bring up the money because, I mean, it, it's NFL, it's a business. Selfishly, I want to know like, how does the money work in this? So the Miami Herald put out, I'm going to do a little reading for you here. I'll, I'll try to make it as fast as possible. But Byron Jones' offseason surgery kicked in an injury guarantee for his $14.4 million base salary in 2022, but he later restructured the deal, converted $13 million of the base salary into a signing bonus, which freed up $10 million for the Dolphins. But he has an $18.3 million cap hit for the 2023 season, but none of the $13.5 million um, uh, base salary is guaranteed for that year. But Miami, they, they kind of added void years as well. So that doesn't extend the length of the contract, but it's used more so as a placeholders for any of those prorated bonuses. So those are for the years of 2025 and 2026, where you could spread out that bonus money if need be. So a pre-June 1st cut or trade would give Miami a cap savings of $3.5 million, but a dead money of $14.8 million they would be charged. And now, obviously, finding a willing trade partner may be a tough task in itself, given his injury status. But a post-June 1st cut or trade would give the Dolphins a cap savings of $13.6 million with a dead cap charge of only $4.7 million. But the team wouldn't be able to use any of that cap space as that post-June 1st cut is way past that first couple of waves of free agency. Uh, the article wraps up by saying Jones retiring would relieve the Dolphins of having to pay his base salary and any roster bonus that is due for the remainder of the contract. But the remaining signing bonus proration would immediately count against the 2023 salary cap. And then according to over the cap, there's a remaining signing bonus proration of $14.8 million on his contract, which would apply to the 2023 salary cap if he does indeed retire, if he does uh, end up retiring. And then in the case of retirement, the Dolphins could also release Jones with a post-June 1st designation, and then you can spread the cap hit out over those two years. So that's what the article says in regards to the money. But quite honestly, in my opinion, this doesn't necessarily change anything in regards 
to the Dolphins offseason plan at that position. If you remember, I actually did a cornerback preview for the offseason. And in that, I wasn't even planning for Byron Jones. I was figuring, you know what, he's going to end up being that post-June 1st cut the way it is if you're not likely to end up being able to trade him. So the Dolphins are still likely going to look to free agency for a cornerback or to the NFL draft for the cornerback for a cornerback. And hell, probably even both. But like I said, like the article said as well, the only thing it really does change is who the hell trades for him now. I mean, that that tweet alone saying, hey, I can't run, I can't jump, that is an immediate black eye to the entire situation. And you know what, to be fair, I never really thought a trade was that super likely after say, after basically saying he was going to be able to play the whole year, not being able to play. A trade at this point was just a dream scenario to get out of the contract and then to potentially get some compensation in the process. But you know what? End of the day, it's it's curious to hear Byron's side about all of this. And now it's going to be real curious to see, you know what? Does, does he end up retiring? Does he truly say, hey, my body can't do it anymore? It's not risk the worth or the, the, the potential money. It's not worth the fame. It's not worth all that. I'm actually going to retire. Or does he get a post-June 1 cut? And then does he find another team? We'll have to see. Time will only tell on that one. But that's the little Dolphins uh, nugget for uh, for Saturday, Dolphins fans. I was actually doing some uh, NFL scouting combine prep when the news broke. So it took me away from that, but I still will get two NFL draft combine uh, preview videos up within the next couple of days here. And to be honest, I actually also just dropped my final positional preview for the offseason what, probably like an hour or two ago now after releasing this video. So I'm gonna co- I actually cover the safeties in that one. So go back and check that one out if you haven't already. But that's my time for today, Miami Dolphins fans. And until next time, bins up.